Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name's Noelle and I do unboxings, mostly lifestyle subscription boxes, but a variety of other categories as well, including books, beauty, jewelry, travel, home decor, and the very occasional dash of Disney. So if you enjoy unboxings, particularly subscription boxes, I hope that you'll consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell, and that way you'll find out whenever I post new videos, which is usually at least once a day, if not twice. Whenever I announce giveaways, there's always a secret password giveaway going on and we are getting close to the end of the month so you want to go back make sure you've watched all those videos to collect all of those secret passwords to be entered to win a mystery box and of course if you have that notification bell turned on you will find out whenever I go live which is usually once a month if not every other month as always if you're already subscribed thank you so much for being here and welcome back today I have another box from a once upon a book club and it's very exciting you guys because this has been sent to me for review through their very important page turners program or their VIP kind of their ambassador program so you apply to be a part of that and then sometimes there are some opportunities to have them send you a box now I have been a subscriber to this particular box for several years I am very behind on my reading you probably already know that so I have about eight of these boxes as well as the Bridgerton box that are sitting here waiting to be read but this is one of the subscriptions where I really like to go ahead and read the actual book so they can fully experience the box because the gifts that are included inside go along with the book in fact there's little stickies on the pages when you're supposed to open those gifts so I like to have the full experience so I can really share with you guys when I do the unboxing for you so that's why there's a delay but I am trying to get caught up this is actually the April box so this one is not too delayed I actually have quite a few from 2021 that I'm trying to get to this subscription if you are not familiar it's $49.99 that does include the shipping you guys and I think that is great you're getting a well-reviewed book in all kinds of different genres everyone gets the same one just like a book club every month and then you get to open up all of those fun and fantastic gifts and there's usually three to five gifts sometimes they can feel a little bit like they're specially made for the box and so you might not have use for them in your daily life but it does really bring the story to life in addition there's always a nice bookmark which is always great to have so this one actually has a quote you didn't change my life I did and then we have a book signed book plate, which that is always an awesome little perk. We always have a quote card. That is something that Once Upon a Book Club is known for. And this one says the same quote, very simple. I know people like to collect this. And this time we actually have an author's note, which I appreciate as well. Inside there's always a guide too that tells you a little bit more. And uh, often they'll do an interview with the author, which they did in this case. There's read along dates if you want to do this as a book club and you can share in the experience with other people online some discussion questions and then there's usually something to kind of go along with the book so in this case they did a true crime crossword puzzle now you guys know I love true crime I listen to a lot of true crime podcasts so I was just so intrigued by this particular book when I read the hints for that month by the way they do have adult as well as young adult options they do a lot of limited edition boxes you can save 10% if you use my code which is simply noel10 of course I'll leave all of that for you in the description box below. I was very excited as well when I got this one because I've actually put my subscription on pause until I get caught up. So this was one that I didn't already have sitting in my pile. This is actually a hardcover. We don't always get hardcovers, but I love when we do. So in case you didn't already see that, it's called The Book of Cold Cases by Simone St. James. So let me go ahead and read the little blurb to you in the back and then we will dive into it. What I do is I'll actually read the passage that is associated with the gift, show you the gift, and that way there's not too many spoilers. Sometimes they will have these boxes available in their shop if they didn't sell out, so you can always get your hands on this particular one as well. So inside, it says, in 1977, Claire Lake, Oregon, was shaken by the Lady Killer murders. Two men seemingly randomly were murdered with the same gun with strange notes left behind. Beth Greer was the perfect suspect, a rich, eccentric, 23-year-old woman seen fleeing one of the crime scenes. But she was acquitted, and she retreated to the isolation of her mansion. And then, many years later, Oregon 2017, so I believe that's 40 years later, it says Shea Collins is a receptionist, but by night she runs a true crime website, The Book of Cold Cases, a passion fueled by the attempted abduction she escaped as a child. When she meets Beth by chance, Shay asks her for an interview. To Shay's surprise, 
Beth says yes. They meet regularly at Beth's mansion, though Shay is never comfortable there. Items move when she's not looking, and she could swear she's seen a girl outside the window. The allure of learning the truth about the case from the smart, charming Beth is too much to resist, but even as they grow closer, Shay senses something isn't right. Is she making friends with a manipulative murderer, or are there dangers lurking in the darkness of the Greer house? It could be both. That's that's my insert. That's uh, taking a quote from um, from Beth herself. Uh, it could be both. Try both. So let's go ahead and read the author's note, you guys. It says, Dear reader, the book of cold cases first formed as an idea because of my love of true crime. I wanted to write a story that had the fun of a true crime tale, but also had a ghost story and didn't involve real life cases. So I invented my own crime and told the story. The book is a blend of true crime, suspense, and the paranormal with a dash of romance added in. My heroine Shay, a blogger, gets the opportunity of a lifetime when she gets to interview Beth Greer, a woman acquitted of being a serial killer 40 years ago. Who is Beth and what secret is she hiding? Is she truly a murderer? And what exactly is the presence that can always be felt just behind Shay's shoulder when she's in Beth's house? I had a lot of fun writing both Shay and Beth as they navigate the twists and turns of the story. I'll leave it up to you to decide what to believe and who's telling the truth. Just be certain that long forgotten secrets sometimes refuse to stay buried. So again, Simone St. James, she has such a great author's name, doesn't she? So I'm going to go ahead and put that off to the side and then we will go ahead and take a look. So there were three gifts this time. And there was one, now they started to sometimes include QR codes. I think this is the second book that I've read where they included a QR code, which was kind of neat to have um, a sonic gift, so not something that you would use in your daily life, of course, but sort of something to just enrich the experience. So they are also really great about beautiful packaging that they have made just for the box. So our first one didn't come until page 98, but look at this gorgeous box, you guys, with that like dripping, rainy, window. I just thought that was so cool and kind of spooky if you know what what you're reading. So I'm not really into like the paranormal or spooky stories, ghost stories. So that element of the book I wasn't super into, but the kind of mystery was fun and it definitely kept me guessing um, a, a good halfway through before I sort of started to figure things out. So when you come across a page, it will have a little sticky note. Sometimes it's a little one like this because it's right at the bottom of the page. Sometimes it's kind of a more full size one. We'll see one of those later. So this is, uh, so we go back and forth between those two different times, 1977 and 2017. So this is Beth. Uh, red wine, her favorite, though of course any wine would do. Beth would drink anything at all, given the chance, and the house knew it. She stared at that bottle, gleaming in the half-light of the drawn curtains, and for a minute she wanted that wine so badly she would have done anything for it. She could practically taste it on her tongue, could feel the slide of it down her throat. She would have sold her soul for that bottle. She closed her eyes. Things are changing, she told herself. She walked to the table and grabbed the bottle, willing her hand not to shake. In the kitchen, she ignored the blood on the floor, tra tracking through it in her nice shoes. She ignored the breeze from the broken door and the huddled shape that she knew was her father's body against the lower cupboards. She flinched away from it and stood at the sink, yanking the cork from the bottle and upending it over the drain. The wine gurgled down the sink. It looked like blood. From the corner of her eye, Beth saw that her father's body was gone. So this is a little bit of that uh, supernatural element right there on page 98. So I actually read this book while I was traveling, so I didn't take the whole box with me. There have been times where the gifts have been small enough that I took them with me, but I didn't. So it's always kind of fun to guess what the accompanying gift was going to be. And I was really hoping that it wasn't uh, necessarily like a wine glass because I don't know what to do with individual pieces of drinkware. What it was, you guys, is a wine uh, like decanter set and an opener set, which is really, really cool. So let me just go ahead and take this out. So this is a wine opener, which I just thought was really neat. I have to learn how to use it so it basically has this really pointy like plunger and it's going to pull the, the cork out of there and they also gave us a foil cutter which of course you want to use that first then we also got a nice little like pourer little aerator and then finally in this little set let me see if I can get everything to fit back in here so I can hold it up for you we got this nice like um uh, vacuum uh, cork so that you can recork your wine if you don't drink it all in one sitting so I actually thought that was really nice and you can see that it all fits into that foam so it's nice that the box is nice as well so it just actually gives us directions too which I super appreciate but it's a good looking it's a good looking little wine set so I've never used an air pressure wine opener I have a couple of different kinds of wine openers like the old school ones but I love one that's super easy I love a good foil cutter that makes it a lot easier as well I don't have an aerator pour 
pour spout at the moment, nor do I have a vacuum wine stopper. So you kind of pump the top of that wine stopper to uh, keep your wine nice and fresh. So I actually thought that was a really cool gift to start with. And I'm definitely one for quality over quantity when it comes to this particular subscription. So our little uh, Sonic fun item came on a few, just a few pages later. Let me see if I can find that for you real quick, just so you can see what it looks like. And I won't play it just because that would kind of ruin some of the surprise. But of course, when she is listening to some of her recordings, uh, there are some voices. So this is what the QR code looked like. Very spooky little post-it they put in there. So that was kind of fun to, uh, I could enjoy that while I was traveling as well. So the next gift came on page 154 and it was another one that kind of came at the bottom of the page. So let me find this one. Let's see if I can remember what section we're talking about. So it says, uh, they think that this is uh, actually Shay looking through an office. So it says, I moved past the bedroom and farther down the hall. The air was still even stuffier than it was downstairs. Like fresh air was alien to this place. The next door I tried opened to a bathroom, but the one after that room was a heavy, was with a heavy wood desk with a blotter on it and a leather chair. Julian Greer's study. I stepped inside. I felt like an intruder in this room, as if the man who owned it would walk back in at any minute. He's been dead for over 40 years, I reminded myself as I approached the desk and put my hand on one of the drawer handles. After a brief pause to inhale a breath, I yanked the drawer open. Inside was a pack of cigarettes. Winston's in the distinctive red and white package. Next to it was a heavy metal lighter. There was an empty ashtray on the desk. I pushed aside the cigarettes left here by a dead man for decades and picked up a piece of paper from a stack beneath it. It was a phone bill dated January 3rd, 1972, listing calls in and out of the house. So there's all of that stuff is still there over 40 years later. This is a pretty cool looking box, right you guys? So the, with the police tape, all right, so I wasn't sure what we get. I was like, I don't think we're gonna get a pack of cigarettes and thankfully we did not. So let me show you, it came in some bubble wrap. You can kind of see there are some kind of cigarettes kind of peeking out. So this is what we got. So there's just a little disc that shows us the cigarette butts, which are still there. And then it's this little trinket dish. And I don't know if you can actually read it, but on that first page, it says those distinctive words, call me Ishmael. So very cool, not from this book, of course, but a very nice looking little trinket dish, kind of double sided. So you can put your rings or your earrings or what have you in there. Very literary, very bookish. And then I'll go ahead and read what the uh, little disc with the cigarette say. It says, it's a bookish ring dish. There was an empty ashtray on the desk. I pushed aside the cigarettes left here by a man for decades. So it just kind of reminds you of where it came from. So kind of cool. They just helped you like tie it in, but I am very glad that it didn't have that particular quote printed inside. Just something a little more bookish, a little more like classic. And then we have one more gift to take a look at, which was not until page 337 so you guys can see how this is really fun in terms of adding to the experience but also sometimes encouraging you along because sometimes it might not be like your usual type of book and sometimes you need that inspiration to get to the next to the next chapter so here's one of the full-size stickies right there and we are on page 337. I think it was only like 340 pages. I really like that they spread out the gifts in this particular one, instead of having like one or three right at the beginning and then none until the very end. And they also didn't have any paper gifts, which is something that was always kind of a pet peeve for me, where if there was a letter in the book, then they would print out the letter, which just seems sort of like extraneous and unnecessary. So um, again, they did mention that Shay, who's like kind of our, our main character here, who's discovering the truth about Beth and the crime she was accused of many many years ago she had her own uh, brush with uh, crime because she was almost abducted so it says they had denied his parole the first person I wanted to call when I heard the news was Beth it didn't make any sense but there it was I didn't call her but she heard the news anyway the next week I got a package in the mail a red shawl old and well cared for folded neatly in tissue paper. It took me a minute to realize it was the shawl Beth had worn the day she was acquitted when she stood next to Ransom in front of all of those reporters, the shawl from the photo that had gone on the cover of Life. Beth hadn't put a note with the shawl, but she didn't have to. She was telling me that she knew what victory felt like, especially when it was hard won. I put the shawl in the closet, neatly tucked into its tissue paper, and I didn't tell anyone about it. 
So she, it's also special because Beth got that scarf the last day that she spent with her mother. And of course there's a lot of mystery surrounding her mother as well. So it's very emblematic for her to kind of give it to her almost frenemy, this, this reporter, basically this writer who's learning the true story about her family and this crime that's kind of overshadowed it for many, many years. So it's kind of, um, it's kind of, a, a peace offering I think as well so this is what this final gift was wrapped up in so just kind of like some folded cardboard essentially and I've removed a lot of the tape already from these boxes as neatly as I could so not surprisingly inside of course you guys we have that scarf it's kind of nice they did a good job with this little with this wrapper so kind of like ghosty, like cloudy interior here. So definitely something you could re-gift to someone, but at the same time, it's not necessarily, when they have the page numbers on the boxes, I kind of wish they didn't do that. I like it when they have the sticky notes on the boxes so that I could actually use those beautiful boxes or re-gift items that I might not personally use. So they actually gave us the little, the cover of Beth there on the cover of Life, and she does look like a femme fatale, right, with her red lipstick. How dare she look confident when she's being a quick of murdering all these all these men uh, and of course we got this lovely scarf so it is in a very deep color it's kind of that like very um, thin fabric so almost like a faux silk but it's not like the kind of scarf that I usually use so it is 100% polyester it's nice and lightweight of course and you could probably use it for different things I like that it is just a regular scarf so you can see this is about how wide it is but because it is so sheer you can definitely um, kind of scrunch it up and use it as a proper scarf so it's got not a, quite a bit of length you could use it as a bag charm it's got a great color to it so I could see using it as decoration during the holidays or to make an outfit it look a little bit more holiday I don't know that I will personally use it I have a ton of scarves but I kind of love that it was super simple and this was definitely one of the gifts that I was sort of anticipating getting as I was reading it I was thinking that would probably make a great gift for us to receive in this box so not too bad so again three gifts I actually liked all of them sometimes there's a gift where I'm like I don't know what to do with this so we got that whole wine opener set with uh, four different pieces with the actual opener the foil cutter the uh, aerating spout out, as well as the wine stopper I thought that was pretty great although you have to kind of keep it in that box because it didn't come with its own sort of special box then we got that cute little trinket dish with the uh, Moby Dick pages on it which I thought was lovely you guys know I love a trinket dish I like bookish things like that where you could definitely regift it as well and then finally we got this scarf which is very simple very plain like you know 100% poly but at the same time a lovely color and it definitely went with the book and of course we got that signed book plate the author's note the bookmark and that fun little uh more interactive bit with the the word the crossword as well as the opportunity to sort of learn a little bit more about the author and her inspiration so you guys let me know what you guys thought i just think this is such a cool box there are a lot of other boxes out there there are some that even do the same thing where there's sticky notes on the pages sometimes they're in particular niches I love this because they really go through all the different genres and it really does work a lot like a book club where a lot of people can be reading the same book at the same time. If you're me, you're reading them like eight months later. But let me know in the comments below what you thought, if you've tried this one out before, if there's any other book boxes you wanna see here on the channel, if you'd like me to go ahead and read those actual boxes, the eight that I have sitting here, and let you know about it. So maybe you wanna get your hands on those books as well. I would love to hear from you as always. And remember, you can save 10% using that code Noel10. I'll leave it for you below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. I would definitely appreciate it. And I will see you all very, very soon in my next unboxing or in the Nobot Nook over on Facebook or over on Instagram at Maui underscore Noel.